hello, hello. Welcome on into another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. And I'm Matt. Today we're going to be talking about an Iowa distillery, Cedar Ridge. We have in front of us their bourbon, their wheat whiskey, and their rye malt. Matt, you want to give us a little bit of a history on, on Cedar? Yes. Okay, also these bottles were a donation from a Travis Wallard uh, up there in Iowa, so we appreciate that. He sent us a box of a bunch of whiskeys and all sorts of cool stuff, so I just want to thank him very much for that. And so, the history of Cedar Ridge is that it started in 2005 uh, by Jeff Quint, and he decided why shouldn't the number one corn steak make bourbon? And so finally in 2010 they did. It's the first distillery opened up in Iowa since Prohibition. And his, his, he's from generations of farming and distilling, which clearly is probably illegal at that point. This, if there, for generations and generations and there hasn't been anything, probably a good chance it was illegal. His grandfather, Nicholas May Brandy, um, <clears throat> The true train two grain to glass distillery because they actually get everything from the Winth and from Winthrop, Iowa at the Quint Farm for their corn. They get their malt, rye, and wheat from Cargill in North in North Dakota. It's twice distilled, non-temperature controlled warehouses. They have an 18% angel share. They won distillery of the year from distilling.com in 2017. And the original distillery was uh, destroyed in the Cedar Rapid floods of 2008 at the Uzenay Ben's Beverage Depot. So that sucks. And they started on a 35 gallon uh, Christian Carl still in 2005, and now they're an 80 gallon European pot still, like everybody else uses, pretty much. So let's get into the nosing and the tasting. All right. I'm gonna start with the bourbon. Yeah, I'll start yeah. with the bourbon. It's a pretty, it's a big bottle. <laughs> the big bottle. It's nice and sweet. It is. Dried fruit and vanilla on the nose. Mm -hmm. Lots of caramels and bacon spices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the sweetness makes sense because it says it's uh, it's two three years old, forty percent, it's a uh, seventy four percent corn, fourteen percent rye, twelve percent six row malted barley, which is usually some of the better scotches use that barley. So that's going to add some of the sweetness as well. Definitely pick up on it on the nose. Yeah, I got like fruit cake and baking spices. I'm getting dill, um, so I'm, I'm picking, picking up, up on, on that rye. Yeah, rye. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, that. yeah, that's a little bit there. And I think, yeah, and it's because it's that Malta right, it's a different type of dill than you usually get. I've gone through and I've smelled all of them already. And once you smell the malted rye, you'll pick it up in the bourbon. That's fine. I don't know if yeah. that makes sense, but... That oh, makes sense. I mean, it's there for sure. But yeah, it's also got your cinnamon and oak, vanilla. Your typical bourbon notes. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Going in. Yeah, it's your dill and rye bread. It's rye bread on there too, for sure. Flavor's nice. Mm -hmm. It's round and creamy, um, not too pointed. Again, with the baking notes, the vanilla, the caramel. It's got some fruit on there for me. A little slight pepper finish as well mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. A little black pepper ding. Mm -hmm. It's minty. It's very minty. It's kind of, yeah, you're right. There's a lot more, not you said the, the rye. Yeah, there's it you definitely pick that rye. More. Yeah, you can really stick it out. Yeah, it's the power of suggestion. Mm -hmm. But it's really there though. That yeah, it's got a lot of the rye actually. Dill. And you've added some water to yours. What's it do? Uh, it tamps down a little bit of the earthy notes. A little bit of the there was a bit of a barnyard on there. Um, kind of a young whiskey funk. Um, kind of tamps that down. Flavor stay pretty prominent otherwise. Mm. It's nice. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's also got some cinnamon, some apple crumbles, uh, like. Cornbread, I would say, on it too. Um, it's really nice. You get that hay like as well on the finish. Mm -hmm. Those grassy notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I feel, like, I feel like the water almost tamped that down a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got like yeah. crushed acorns in it as well, I think, and a little bit of canned peaches. Okay. It's nice. I like it. It's a good whiskey. It's pretty good. It does taste warmer, though, I think, than the 40. Mm hmm. It doesn't, yeah, for me in 40, I'm kind of surprised how warming it is. But it's good, I mean, I think this is what they're doing in two or three years. I mean, imagine what they can have when they put out a five or a six year whiskey. Right. Yeah. It's, it's definitely good. good. I like it. I like it. All right. Let's go on to the, what are we doing next? The wheat whiskey. whiskey. We got the wheat whiskey next here. A little 375 bottle. It's, they're cute. They're so cute, so cute these bottles. Oh, I definitely get 
completely different animal than the bourbon was. It's very earthy. A little more sweet, but not that corn syrup sweetness. I get some lemon on that, on the nose. Mm -hmm. Honey and caramel. And... But it's definitely sweet like most wheat whiskeys oh, that yeah. I've come across. Most are. Yeah, it's very sweet. Candy and butterscotched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Toffee, cream, butter. And white grape. Ooh. Oh yeah, just like which, that. Oh, which white funny, grape juice. Which yeah. it says they also on their property they also have a winery and a gigantic event space. So I wonder how much the wine, you know, being from a wine background for these guys, I wonder if that has any effect on this. It, it probably does. Have does. Influence. I mean, it says it's uh, for, this is also forty percent and it's a hundred percent malted white winter wheat. Okay. So Ooh. so it's technically a single malt, but it's you know it's really but it's, since it's what it is, but we're not gonna call it that. It's wheat whiskey. So, and it's two years old as well. It smells really good though, all right, that's what it tastes like. It, it tastes even better than it smells. Uh, you say it smells good. To me, the flavor is absolutely fantastic. Um, mm. We've got the honey, the oak, mm -hmm. I got some wal walnut in there. It's not as sweet as it smells like it's going to be. There's more mm -hmm. depth and complexity to it. Definitely. Yeah, but that, that butterscotch and toffee creaminess comes through on the palate for sure. Um, but it's also got clove and cinnamon in there. Yeah, and you might think this is kind of weird, but I get a little bit of cabbage taste on the finish. Ooh. Interesting. Okay, that's interesting. I've never got cabbage on a whiskey, but okay. I have never had before either, but it's like a, like a boiled cabbage. Hmm. I think you have a lot of experience with cabbage. Cabbage is good. Hmm. It's also got that nuttiness as well. That's a, that's a good little pour. I enjoy this. Yeah, it's got a little minty finish to it as well. So it, that kind of tr comes over like in the bourbon had it, and maybe it's kind of a signature profile. I guess we'll find out when we do the other one, uh, the rye, and see if that's a profile maybe this disorder has. I'm not really sure. And again, you put some water in it? The water um, almost dials up the proof. It feels even hotter than it did without it. Um, all the flavors remain constant. It feels like oil separated. It's a lingering finish. Um, yeah. Excellent. Both of these have been quite nice with the drop. Definitely. All right, let's move on to the malted rye. So 43%, 51% rye, 34% unmalted rye, 12% corn, three malted barley. Um, soaked in water to germinate and they blast with hot air to dry it. So this is a little bit different style. Mm -hmm. And the pickle's right up front for me. It is. Now go back to the bourbon. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now it's yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, you're really picking up now. Holy crap! I get that pickle. I get mint. I get kind of a wintergreeny type mm. mint. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of berry. Berry. Mm -hmm. Red berries. Red the, berries. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. It's right there. It's behind that. Behind this is dill. this is more to me more of those wine notes that you were just talking about. Yeah. Yeah, like a I'm dry red. A lot red. more of the wine notes in this. Yeah, it's that's definitely there. Like, like a sherry? Mm-hmm. Oh. It's a sherry or a... Yeah. It's really, a, just more like just a big cat. It smells... Yeah, red berries, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, raspberries. Big cat, and... I would agree on that for sure. Yeah, this is, like I said, it's got the rye and the dill, but also it's got, like, old boots. Old boots. Like, old, le old worn leather worn boots. Leather. Yeah. It's good. Oh, it's, I'm smelling like a deep, dark chocolate. Yeah, that's there too. You're right. It's got some. It's also got that spearmint. So I think I am thinking that's probably is a house style thing. They bring that mintiness through. It's also got the hay in the barn scent, but not not bad. It's young oak, I'm sure. Um, it's got your baking spices as well. But since this is a malted rye, which you generally don't find, there's very few malted ryes that are even made in the world. They're um, making more and more nowadays. They are making more and more. So and actually, we have one here in Texas, which we're pretty excited about. Um, but it is nice that, yeah, I think, well, I can think of like five or six. It's not yep. many. So it's nice. This is actually, I really like the nose in this though. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is, smells very nice. I moved on to the taste. Uh, it was lovely, but a rye. A um, mm. little the bit of that black in pepper the dill. Forward. There's some mints. Mm -hmm. I get the berries mm -hmm. a lot on the finish. Yeah. 
Lots like it's of pickle forward, but then as it's lingering in the finish, I get the berries. Yeah, I yep. get that. I like mm. the mid palette a lot more than the, the forefront of it. It's cherries and chocolate as well. Um, but yeah, same thing with the minty still. That's right. All of these taste higher than 40%. Yeah, this, yeah, now this one's 43. Okay. Well, but still, yeah. none of them taste anywhere near that low. No, these these taste more in the fifties. Mm -hmm. You want to know what this kind of reminds me of on the finish? Stranahan's black. Okay. The diamond. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, the finish kind of. I don't know if it's the berries or the malty or the malty, but it, it kind of brings that to we'd the front. To, we'd have to compare it to find out. But you know. But yeah, it's also got like apple cobbler and black pepper and clove as well on this one. But it does have a sweet candied finish, I would say. Yeah. But yeah. The berries. It's the, ba it's the berries that yeah. make it sweet. I agree with that. That's a... Drop of water dials down the dill note. Uh, oh, really? And the berries remain pretty constant. But it also dials down the proof. Um, mm. And it tastes a lot more flat than it just did previously. Mm. Mm. It's kind of hit and, hit and miss. It's yeah. yeah you just I'm, I'm dialing, I'm dialing down the thing that I don't enjoy, but I'm also dialing down the thing I enjoy. So it's, uh, it's yeah. How much water did you put in? Two drops instead of one. Oh, that could have been one too many. Maybe yeah. <laughs> All right. Back to the bourbon. You gonna go back to the bourbon? <laughs> I like the malt. Yeah, of course you do, because I like the malted rye. You're not you like the, those pickle notes. You're not the rye people. I am. That's true. I'm not the rye people. Well, thanks for joining us on another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. Until next time, keep on crusading for better whiskey in your glass. Cheers. Cheers.